Lots of tech stocks going up, but I, I think a lot of folks on the street are focused on Tesla and the stocks move over $2,000 a share. Uh, what do you make of that move and how long can it continue? Uh, it's shocking and it can probably continue to go up. Um, I mean, I'm surprised by the number. It makes it tough to be a new investor in that stock to think about whether or not you'll get the returns from a price perspective. But great company, amazing company, amazing you know CEO at that firm. I want to see a lot of success for them. But valuations do matter. And so, uh, you know, that price is, is definitely concerning, but hopefully they can drive the growth to support some of it at least. No, what do you tell investors looking that you that come to you and say, you know what, I want to get involved with Tesla. I missed the past $500 in the stock. What's your advice to them? So you just got to try to read the tea leaves a little bit. What's going to slow down the company? What's going to speed it up? Um, you know, interesting segues in terms of thinking of what's going on with Lyft and Uber in California. I had read some stories around how that could really push autonomous driving even more uh, to possibly deal with the, the challenges that they have there. And then it, it makes you think of the Tesla story, the one that has, you know, as far as I know, the most miles, uh, the, you know, the most data, probably one of the better systems, at least that we've seen tested on the road. So all of those becomes very interesting things. And it's possible a year or two from now, we think you know $2,000 a share was still a fairly low price, but, but who knows? You know, of course, tech has been in the spotlight this year leading this advance, but cannabis stocks are getting a lot of love too. Uh, no, I'm perhaps a little more quietly. What do you like right now in, in that space? Sure. So as you guys know, we, we focus in on the space. Um, it's been a strong year for it. And there's a lot of things that I think that are working in its favor. Uh, in this pandemic environment that we've had, it's been considered an essential business. You've got a lot of you know, uh, wind in your sails in terms of states coming online and either uh, legalizing it for medical and or recreational use. Uh, and so really the focus has been in the United States. Uh, these companies that are called multi-state operators or sometimes single state operators, and these are companies like True Leaf, Cure Leaf, and, and Green Thumb Industries, all companies that have actually outperformed the, the tech bellwether of the NASDAQ 100 this year, she leaves up almost 80% this year. So they're putting out some amazing numbers. I think they've learned from the mistakes maybe that were made in Canada. And so we see that as a volatile but strong growth opportunity in your portfolio. How much does the election matter to cannabis stocks, do you think, in terms of, you know, if, if Biden's in the White House, is it is it friendlier for these uh, cannabis companies when it comes to legalization? I think it is, but his you know position has changed quite a bit. So there was that you know Biden Sanders unity pledge that did commit to to descheduling cannabis, which is a good start. Uh, I think it would also uh, federally legalize it uh, for medical use once that that occurs. It still didn't resolve some of the banking issues that you have in place. So those companies and firms still have to operate on a cash basis, and it's not good you know for the businesses. It's not good for the employees, and it's not good for the states and the counties that want to collect that tax revenue. Um, so. Yes, a Democratic election or a victory would help, but states seem to be just moving you know, forward on their own. And you'll see more states coming online, I'm sure, late this year and early next. No, I know you've closely, also closely follow the, uh, the FANG stocks. These stocks have made a, a pretty nice move again past week and a half or so. Uh, do you think this is now becoming part of a Kamala Harris potential vice president trade? We all know she's friendly uh, with Silicon Valley and probably want to drop the hammer on, on regulation if she does get into office. Yeah, it could be challenging. I mean, again, what's going on with uh, Lyft and Uber, <laughs> try to combine those names. Um, and then even what's going on with Apple, you guys were just covering the Fortnite saga there and other companies are stepping up. Same things, you're starting to see, you know, just little cracks in the armor, whether or not the valuations we've seen relative to stock price can be sustainable. You know, nothing going on with those companies, they'll all be fine, but it could impact revenue, right? So, you know, is a you know uh, is a democratic uh, victory better for Silicon Valley? I don't know, maybe possibly, but I think given some of the challenges that they have, I could see uh, things being a little bit actually more difficult for them in that case. What would be the catalyst uh, for sell off in big cap tech? Uh, well, certainly seeing some of these regulations change relative to how uh, companies that are using the shared model um, treat um, their consultants slash employees. Um, you see it with Apple, if they can still maintain the generous revenues uh, in their app store, um, even with Amazon, um, you know, more competitors in the space, uh, Target and Walmart, you know, increasing their online sales and delivery. So you see competition coming from all different angles, which is good, and some regulatory challenges from all different angles, but could make it more challenging depending on what happens in this upcoming election. 
Noah Inas here. What do you make of Airbnb having an IPO? I mean, given the fact that you were just talking about Lyft and Uber and regulations, and Airbnb has had issues with some cities of, uh, regarding regulations, and what do you make of this uh, sort of sharing economy uh, IPO, given that Uber and Lyft didn't do so well uh, in their IPOs uh, as they went forward? Yeah, I'm torn, and I should say I haven't read their filings yet, so you know, my view is I want those companies to succeed. I do think they provide a great service. I do think that the people who, uh, you know, work for them as consultants or whatever want to do those jobs. But I think at the same time, you know, you got to take care of people. Um, the environment that we're in this year, you know, shows us how challenging it can be just to get, you know, through life. Stores are closing and, and jobs have been furloughed. And if you're in that kind of job and working environment, even though you enjoy some flexibility that these sharing types of companies offer, um, you know, someone's got to be looking out for them and looking out for their best interests and their future and making sure that they're saving for their future uh, and giving them maybe better longer term opportunities, but they can also demand it and go find it themselves. So I don't know. It's the same thing. I think great business model. They're probably going to maybe not have the same kind of profitability they might have had in the past because of additional regulatory things that could come around them. So I don't know. Same thing. Hope they succeed. If it's priced well, it should work well for investors.